an electric car. In the 90s, this was the most famous electric car, realistically, for the whole world. People will think you're gay. One of us. Let's move on. My previous videos on EVs is by far and away my most popular video that's not just a straight up tutorial. So today I thought I would revisit it because there's been a few different changes, one of which I know a whole lot more. There will be a hybrid version coming in the future, but now I have made it so much more simple to make an EV. So today we're gonna make a car and I'm gonna show you how to do it. There'll be timestamps in the description, which you could use to jump around if you don't love me at all. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna probably make this like a 70s sort of electric vehicle. So it's gonna be a very short wheelbase and quite a bit older. It's also going to be a coupe or hatchback, whatever, just as long as it is a convertible. Wow, we actually don't have many options. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with this one. Something cool and funky. <laughs> oh, looking at this body in 3D I, that I've never used before or never really seen, I don't think, because I've not maybe paid attention. This is funny to look at. I'm going to set this to the 70s. This is going to be made out of fiberglass and a space frame because this would have been a very short, very small production run made out of just regular steel. Probably some sort of rear longitudinal will be nice and heavy on the back there. Then to keep prices down, we're probably going to go with something like a solid axle coil and then, oh no, now we have to have a, oh, we have to have suspension in the rear. So I'm thinking double wishbone in the rear, just very simplistic. Now I'm regretting my choice of solid axle on the front. That's seemingly just a bit inverse to have uh, no independent. You know what? Yeah, let's go with the silly suspension. The no independent suspension up front and the independent suspension in the rear. That's what we're doing today. And this is going to be very, very low cylinder of gravity, but also very, very heavy. And it seems that we're just too wide. We could fit a 1.7 liter flat six in here. Now, because the weight of the engine is not actually in the engine J-beam part of the mod, I'm not actually gonna be using any of this, but I need to make it heavy to replicate how heavy the batteries and the electric motor are compared to a regular vehicle. Then it just needs to be as heavy as possible. Now, if I drop this down, it should make it heavier. Harmonic dampener, go with some heavy duty car sort of stuff, drop the quality, it doesn't really particularly matter. None of this really matters. None of this, but as long as it doesn't detonate, I suppose we'll be fine. And then drop that quality down. Some shortcuts, cause they're heavier. Some jewels, yeah, some two ways. Which one's heavier here? Seems that reverse flow is the heavier. So we'll go two of them and our engine is fine and weighs 178 kilos. Noise. Oh, I think I know I haven't seen this body before. There's regular bodies, but I selected a rear engine. So yeah, it had to be in this one, I think. I know my brain no work you do good. Then we're going to go with whatever, man. You know, it doesn't matter. We've got our own transmission set up. So none of that matters whatsoever. You know what? Let's just go with the heavier version. Then because it's quite an older vehicle, we'll go cross flies for now and we'll go with some sort of hard long life. I feel that these can be a bit narrower. Yeah, that's more like it. Keep these wheels made out of steel. That's all good. Probably because this wants to keep the price down and all that sort of stuff. So we'll go solid drums all around. My goodness, <laughs> those brakes are so tiny. Yep, okay, changing the size does not change much at all. No wonder tray, because that would be silly. Lots of drag, I reckon. Lots and lots and lots of drag. Which one is the heaviest? It doesn't tell us which one is heaviest, so we'll just go maybe hidden auto soft top, some handmade seats, and the heaviest radio. Now, this isn't entirely accurate accurate, but what we're doing here is adding weight to the vehicle. If this doesn't weigh like 1200 kilos for such a small body, I think it's 1.8 meters long. It, I've done something wrong. No power steering because that's way too convenient. A standard spring, a twin tube, and then we'll just go with some sort of normal preset. And we're only at 690 kilos, so I think we're gonna have to go in and make this out of steel. And we're still only at 750 kilos. Damn it! Now I'm looking at the right height in this and I'm thinking, yeah, no, going with a solid axle was a bad choice. So double wish one on the front because that is easy to manufacture. McPherson strut, a little bit more complicated. So we'll just go with double, then drop it down. Wow, even with these pathetic drum brakes, we're actually still out breaking ourselves. And the front brakes are a little too strong. So we're gonna reduce them a lot. What I think I'm gonna do instead is I am gonna raise the pressure back up, but instead we're gonna run a 
Humford brake pad, which should also be cheaper. I mean, feel nice and cushiony. Oh yeah, complete comfort brakes. Oh my God, that's gonna be the most atrocious car in the world. Eh, 69 front brake force. <laughs> All right, I have been fiddling with the suspension for quite some time. It's very stiff on the front, very soft on the rear, positive camber on the front and negative camber on the rear. And the thing still wants to oversteer like crazy. I didn't want to put in really big rear tires to compensate, but I kind of feel I need to. This is just so weak. We have a 70.5% rear weight bias. My goodness. What does it do around the test track? A three minute 30. You know what? Not actually the worst. This on the other hand does look like the worst, but I think we're now at the point where we're going to start to design. So paint job first, paint this roof invisible because we want complete convertible and then the main body let's make it like a nice soft pink hold on is that the right pink uh kind of all right let's remove this rear window then grab ourselves some of this goodness and invisible god i love how easy it is to do convertibles these days this chassis though is clearly going to be in the way chassis uh, chassis tunnel size. Okay, well, chassis tunnel size is not doing anything. Great. Neither is firewall position. Wait, hold on. Firewall. No, that's front firewall. That's not a firewall then. That's just a bit of metal. What? what? Uh, all right, fine. What we have to do then is just hide the chassis entirely and we'll make our own. Let's start by grabbing ourselves some interior and measuring it to fit. That's doing good so far. Let's go ahead and stick in a seat. I kind of want something really cheap, but also something that fits the body line of the car a little bit. What's the 70s bench seat look like, I wonder? I think, yeah, I think we could make the bench seat fit in here quite nicely, actually. My God, this bench seat is so big compared to the rest of the car. Jesus. I think that'll work. What we'll do is we'll use some something around here to fill in the gap to make it look like it's meant to be there. Let's try start by using dash filler bits. Hmm. It's kind of almost working. I think I'm going to have to live with it because there's, there's not really a whole lot to do to actually make these fit. They just don't want to. And this little gap right here, just it's going to be a pain in my butt, isn't it? It's, why is there no edging to this seat? Why? Why have you done this? Well, whatever. Let's go ahead and let's try putting a dash in. Now, that's the sort of dash that belongs in a car like this, I reckon. We'll go with a steering wheel. I think this one fits very well for this sort of design. Oh, boy. This is really coming into its own now, I reckon. What sort of grill do we go with? It works perfectly. Now, what sort of headlight are we going to choose? I think these feel like quite old retro and custom sort of thing. Let's try something like this, I think. Hmm, yeah. Let's try flipping it around a little bit. Yeah. You know what? That looks pretty good. I think we're gonna go with that. I love this so much. Isn't this cool? Just everything about this is just cool. All right, let's go ahead and give this a name and send it over. We're gonna call this the Mini Terror. Totes my goats, that's what this name is called. I mean, why would you call this anything else? Because this thing is gonna terrorize their roads. I am tempted, however, to give more front camber though, because it just, it looks so silly. Oh. Yes, that's how we like to see it. Lovely, lovely extra camber. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. So over we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up this file, which will be linked in the description. And I'm just going to go over a few things very quickly. This is your power. And usually a motor will have a solid amount of power. So we've got 107 Newton meters of torque all the way up to 5,000 RPM. And then that's going to drop off to about 10,000. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out how much torque you want and then about where you want it to start tapering off and then at what RPM it'll stop going at. This is the only part here you'll need to change to, you know, kind of meet the what you want out of your vehicle. Then down here, we've got electric motor two as the default sound. There've been a few changes in the sound settings. You've also got electric motor three and electric motor four, but you don't have nothing, zero or one, just two, three and four. Then your main gain, which is how much volume it has, will go anywhere from minus 30 
to 30. And we're probably gonna set this one to like 25. This, this I wanted to be like super obnoxiously loud. Then I have direct drive. So there is no transmission, there is no nothing. It just goes straight from the electric motor into a differential into the wheels. So we have a front transmission, a rear transmission, and an all wheel drive transmission. So you have three options. Then here's the battery pack. Now you could change your battery pack sizes here by changing the default, which is 50. Then you've got the minimum charge you can have. Then you've got the maximum charge you can have. So currently this is set to about 50. And then you'll probably want to change this. This is just a little bit of extra information on what your battery uh, charge maximum can be. Then you can close that off, open up the new mod that you have. Then you'll open up vehicles. Then you'll open up the name of the car. Then you'll just drag and drop that in. Hit OK or whatever it is for your file thingy that you use. And here's our car. But you may notice immediately that we still are running our petrol motor. Well, we go Control W or you can hit Exit, hit Vehicle Config because that's what we're changing now. Under Engine, just switch this over to EV Motor. And look at that, we're done. My God, I seem to have put too much power through this car. Whoops-a-daisies. Uh, let's go ahead and also switch this. We did have rear drive. So we're going to go into here. We've got our 50 kilowatt battery pack, but our transmission here is going to be rear drive. Then when we take off, it'll be a little bit more like what we expect. Except this is very powerful for what this car is. My goodness, and it's also just a little bit wayward. Oh, so much weight in the rear. This thing wants to bomb knock her around. Oh, this thing is problematic. Now, uh, it still does have the engine shown back there, but if you don't want to show it, then just don't show it. The other thing you can do is you can go into the main J-beam of the car. Oh God, ah! Oh. And you can actually remove it there. So you can't do this while BeamNG is open. You'd have to close it off or unpack it first. And if you know how to unpack it, that's all good. But what you would do is find the name of the car in .jbeam file. Here we go. So this is the name of the car, .jbeam. That's what we'll open up. Then scroll down until you find flex bodies. Then the one here that has like a well, main exhaust you can get rid of. And also this one. These two, you can just take them and remove them. Then you would save it, relaunch BeamNG, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, that is the crux of it. We're gonna do a little bit more. And if you do like this sort of stuff, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe in the future. And you can also see that this is actually an electric motor. This is just going then directly into your things here. This is your charge amount. This is uh, saying it's electric as well. And this is your power curve. If you wanna see these, the apps are called Torque Curve and powertrain visualization. But now that we're done, you can go ahead and remove them and just take this thing around for a lovely little jaunt. Let's see if we can actually try to control this properly because my God, okay. Oh, this thing is super sketch. Brakes are not great. Whoa, Nelly. That is uh, unfortunate. We also do have brake regen set up a little bit, though it will be getting hopefully a power up soon because regen at the moment from BMG sucks something chronic. Can we turn? Oh my god, this thing does not like to turn. It loves to get sideways under braking and all that sort of stuff. But when like mid corner, this thing just wants to understeer like crazy. Let's see. Hold on. Alt U. What speed are we going? Wow, we're going like 160 kilometers an hour. That's very fast in a very dangerously small car. What are we going to do around slingshot? I'm guessing oversteer. Ooh, a little bit. Oh, you know what? Actually, this is quite nice. Oh, we're losing power. Losing steam. I mean, we are at the tippy top of our power band. So, I mean, it's not surprising. And then... Ooh, Shizen! The brakes immediately lock up! Oh, damn. But I love this. Uh, so... There is a few other little things you can change if you so choose. Uh, a lot of it you'll have to probably go learn yourself. There is so much involved in this sort of stuff. I just wanted to make it as simple as possible. What I might try to do is try out all-wheel drive. Now, if at any point you want this to be saved, you just don't want to have to reload this all the time, you can go into save and load and you can just save this to whatever sort of thing you want this to be. So let's set this to just rear drive. That is the default what we'll have. And we'll save this as rear default. 
default. Then you can just hit load on that. And if you have under user interface, show custom vehicles and vehicle selector, when you go to select your vehicle, it'll have like the thumbnail set of where it is, but it'll also be your version. And a similar sort of thing, if we go direct drive, so we got an all drive version, we'll call this AWD, save that as. Then we have all wheel drive and rear drive. Let's go into vehicles, bring up our thing. And then we got all wheel drive and rear drive. So those are how you work those things. And I think that is particularly helpful if you're going to go in to do some sort of time trial. So let me show you time trials, select our vehicle. And there you go. You've got your two vehicles there. You can just pick whichever one you want. Now we have all wheel drive and let's see if that's helped our handling. Uh, I gotta say, uh, not issues, uh, features, a uh, handling features. That's what we're gonna go with. Oh, lots of lockup, lots of lockup. Oh God, this is really, really bad. I have one idea for something I could do to fix some things with this car. So give me a minute. I'm going to go away and do a little bit of editing. 2,000 years later. So it's been a few hours now since I've uh, started working on this thing. And really the best way I got around it oversteering way too much was to actually just give it less power. And now that we've got this thing set up just how we wanted, I thought, you know what? Let's turn this into a Friday bike day. And for this little thing, you know, I didn't want to go with the default sounds. I wanted something a little bit more special. So we've got that set up and... <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought I would just have a little bit of fun with this. <laughs> so yeah, I went to all the effort, I cut up the audio, I stuck it in here as just a little bit of a joke and oh my god, this thing is really slow and now it's looping in my headset. Oh, this is not particularly great. Oh, Brian. <laughs> this is gonna take forever. Oh god, it sounds so depressed. Oh no. Oh, it's so slow. <laughs> so the reason why I did this is because I came across this clip on uh, YouTube and I showed my trans partner uh, this video and even she thought this was really funny. And we just, we keep on joking about a lot, cracking jokes about how the oil company sucked and all that sort of stuff. And just the absurdity of the joke itself is just so funny. I do commend the Simpsons writers from whoever made this episode because it is so so good and we do very much appreciate it if you're offended then i mean i mean come on where uh, i'm bisexual we're in a polyamorous relationship and my partner is a trans person so i mean <laughs> it, it, it's kind of not really that bad if even we're making fun of how just absurd and fantastic this is. You will find that the audio does crack and pop sometimes. Uh, that's a little bit of a problem. But for now, we're just going to, you know, scoot the replay of this to right at the end. And across the line in a very sprightly 18 minutes. Oh my God, this is excruciating. Do you know how many times I've heard that voice line over and over again because it's on loop because it's the engine sound? Oh my God, you guys should thank me so much by tapping that like button. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. It's been a very fun little tutorial. I've been wanting to do an update to the electric car thing for quite a while now because a lot of people would have troubles with it. And I thought, you know what? We'll just cut out most of the difficulty part and just do this. Oh no, there they are. Oh no, the gays! Oh god, there's really only one last thing to do. And that's to take money right out of Leonological's mouth and do my own jump arena with this absolute specimen. I am probably going to put this in the BMG repository, so if you want to go check that out, it will be uh, available. Whether it sticks around, I don't know, maybe they might have problems with copyright. Who knows? If it doesn't, 
Eventually, I'll probably put a link in the description of this video so you can try it out. But uh, yeah, no, there will be links to all of the files we talked about. You will be able to do an electric conversion. This will not be a part of the regular conversion if you're wondering about the audio stuff. Just what we know about the audio to be good. But for now, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye. Oh, look, it can still drive. Yay. And it's not flooding either. Wow, that's surprising. I've made an amphibious vehicle, just it not the way I was expecting.